Hi, welcome back to the shed for episode five of the Yerg's Cup build. And in this episode, we'll be putting the body that we've been working on for the last couple of weeks to one side and starting work on a neck. Last time we got quite a bit of work done on the body. We got all the round overs put onto it. We got the contour cut put on for the forearm and the belly. And I'm really happy with the way that that's gone. It's made it a lovely shape. The next things we need to do on the body is actually put some routes in for pickups and for the tremolo and controls, etc. But I can't really do a lot of that until I've kind of figured out where the neck's going because that is pretty vital for bridge placement, etc. So I'm going to put this to one side now and start to do a little bit of work on the neck itself. But because I haven't got a set of plans to work from or any templates, I'm having to make my own. And I'm not going to make a neck template. I've just made a headstock template. And this is actually the headstock from a Jaguar, which I think will work pretty well on this base. I'm not sure if they are exactly the same. They look very similar in pictures that I've seen. In terms of material, I've got this great big lump of maple for the neck itself. Now this needs to be three quarters of an inch thick and it is currently one and three quarter inches thick. So I'm going to have a go at cutting this down to size and resawing it so that I can get potentially two neck blanks out of this bit of wood because it would be a shame to just plane away all that excess material. I shouldn't have any problems cutting this down the middle if I can get the bandsaw set up right. And likewise, I've got this piece of black cabbage bark for the fretboard. It needs to be six mil. It is 25 mil. So again, I will resaw this so that we can get two out of it. So I think that's going to be the first job. I'll quickly change out the blade and the bandsaw and we'll see if we can get these cut down. Well, that was an extremely difficult cut and there must have been a hell of a lot of tension in that piece of wood. I don't know if you can see that, but that really isn't any good as a fretboard. And as you can see, that's bowed quarter of an inch. So that's put six millimeters of, of bow into that bit of wood. Weirdly though, the other piece is relatively flat. It's getting on for twice as thick as we need it. So I can take a bit of material off that and hopefully that will bring it nice and straight. Okay, it's the next night and this is still a banana. So no way on earth we're using that, but this one hasn't moved at all. It's still kind of as straight as it was. So I'm quite hopeful that we'll actually be able to use that. So we need to get that kind of through the planer and thickness down. But before we do that, we need to split this big lump of maple because that needs to be thicknessed as well. So I'm gonna get this over to the bandsaw and hopefully quite quickly get this ripped into two pieces. Okay, so that's the maple split. It took probably about 10 minutes to do the whole thing. It really was struggling, but to be honest, it's not done a too bad a job. It's wandered a little bit off the line, but it's cut it quite straight. So I'm kind of, basically I've cut on the line on the top and it's pretty much cut on the line on the bottom as well, which is great. I'm about two or three mil 
over thickness on both pieces so there's plenty of material so the next step will be to kind of get this through the thicknesser and get it down to the 18 mil that we need now i don't need the full length of this board it is much much longer than i need but i haven't done the maths yet to work out exactly how much i need so i'm just going to bang both of these through the thicknesser get them down to 18 mil and then I've got an extra neck blank for when I do another Fender style guitar. So I'll do some clearing up, we'll break out the planer and we can get everything dimensioned up. Okay, so I've got this set up in planer mode first because there is ever so slight kind of unevenness on one side of this. So I'll flatten this off on the planer and then I can set it up in thickness mode. I'll get the two neck blanks thickness down first and then I'll get this stuck to a stout piece of timber just to keep it straight and we can send that through and get that thickness as well. Okay, so that's the fretboard and the two neck blanks thickness down now. And this is kind of pretty much spot on six mil, which is great. And these are about 19 mil. So these are kind of a little bit thicker maybe than they need to be. But given that this is a base and it's a six string base at that, I think a little bit of extra meat on the neck blank isn't going to hurt so i think that's going to work well because i'm going to try and focus on getting this neck some of the way along now there's a number of operations we need to do firstly we need to put the truss rod in i struggled to get a truss rod my initial calculations mean that i need to be somewhere a little over 20 inches from the knot so this truss rod is just about long enough to cover that it's 19 and three quarter inches so i'm planning to have this end level with the end of the neck or recessed ever so slightly in which means we're going to be short about 10 ish mil from the knot and it's not a problem it's going to do all of its work in the middle not at the ends. So additional to that, because this is going to be a six string bass, and although those strings are a little bit thinner than you might normally have on a bass, there's still a lot of them and there will be a lot of tension. So I'm going to put some carbon rods into this neck as well. However, I normally put six by six carbon rods in, but I couldn't get any at the appropriate length. So I've actually got three by six, which I think will be strong enough because in that six millimeter dimension, there is a lot of stiffness in the three mil not quite so much so we need to get all of this marked out and then laid out for the truss rod and the carbon rods so the next step is to get back to the computer break out the fret position calculator on the stumac website and just start to do some calculations to find out exactly where everything needs to go and laying this out is going to be relatively straightforward and luckily i've got a long enough board that i can actually lay this out at full size and measure the entire scale length on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start off i'm going to position the headstock template where i think it needs to go and i'm just going to mark where the center line falls and then i can set this marking gauge up 
to that. And we're just going to put a gauge line right the way down the board. And from there I can mark in my headstock. which literally only just fits on, but only just is good enough. And that's my knot line. So I can square a line across for that. And then from the knot, I can measure along that center line 30 inches. That's my scale length. Of course, this neck is going to be a lot shorter than that eventually. And with that done, I can then mark out where my 12th fret is going to be, which of course is precisely half of the scale length at 15 inches. And I can square a line across from there. So obviously that's given me the headstock and I've got a rough idea of where the end of the fretboard's going to fall, but I've got no idea of what the taper on this thing should be. Now I've done a bit of research and the nut on these is about 42 millimeters. So I'm going to set my dividers up at half of that, which is 21 mil, and put a couple of marks in. Now the next measurement I need is the width of the neck at the 12th fret. Now I'd seen somewhere on the internet that that was 52 mil, but I had no way of confirming that until one of my regular viewers, whose name escapes me for the time being, but I will put it down here, measured their Squire base six, and they confirmed that it is actually, well, they said 51.5, so I'm gonna go with 52. So basically I will need to measure out 26 mil on the dividers and just pop a couple of marks in there. And that seems to have gone okay. So it's just a matter now of kind of joining up the dots. And obviously we need to go a little bit of a way beyond there. So that gives us the taper for the neck that we need, but it doesn't tell us where the neck's actually gonna finish. So to find that out, I've been on the fret position calculator and I found out that the 21st fret, which is the last one, is 535.5 mil from the nut. So I can measure that. And I'm afraid I've gone from inches to millimeters again. But for this measurement, I think it's important. Square a line across there. But of course, that's not the end of the fretboard because the fretboard will extend a little bit beyond there. So I'm going to add about half an inch onto there. And then I'm going to take the compass and just draw in that radius just to give us the proper shape that we know and love. I think that looks okay. So with that established, we can actually now start to do a little bit of routing because we know that our truss rod needs to finish here, which means we can put our carbon fibre rods in next to it. So from here, we can get this board clamped down properly onto the bench, break out the big router and get the channel cut in for the truss rod first. Okay, so that's the, the router all set up. I didn't film it. I've just done exactly the same as I always do. I've used this little V-point bit in the router and set that right up into that gauge line that I've put in for the center line, set the fence to that, and then I've just switched that out for a normal six millimeter straight cutting bit, which we will use to cut the actual channel. I'm planning to go down and do this in about three or four passes. I want to be taking around about three millimeters out for a total depth of, it's usually about 10 mil, but this rod doesn't look to be that big. So this one is only nine mil. So yeah, 
three passes at three mil increments should do it. So I'll get my earphones on and get this routed out. Okay, so that's the truss rod in. I've left a little bit of material at this end where I'll, I'll drill through once we've cut this to shape, just to give us a nice clean opening for the adjuster wrench to go in. That's gone in very nicely. It's a nice snug fit, which is brilliant. So next up, we need to mark up and route out for these little carbon fiber rods. And as I said, these are three mil by six mil rods which we need to put in in that orientation because obviously there's a little bit of flex in it that way so we wouldn't want them like that we want them in that way because they are as stiff as you like in that direction so to do that i've got another cutter and this is it's a three millimeter router cutter which is going to be quite delicate and potentially could break so i've got four of them that should see us through these two slots i think if i go down in quite small increments they should be fine i'm thinking if i go down like a mil and a half each time that will absolutely be spot on and i think that's easier to set up with the small router so i'm going to pack the big router away get the little router out get these set up and we can set about routing in these carbon rods okay so we've got the little router set up I've set it up with the the depth gauge and i've literally got about a mil and a half of cut on at the moment so there's hardly anything i've marked out where i want the two rods to go and i'm just going to work my way down in several passes again until i get to depth which is for these six mil so get my ears back on and we'll start to work our way through this. And then we have the carbon and the truss rod installed. Very happy with how that's gone. Went really, really well. Luckily, didn't have any problems routing in these thin little routes for the carbon rods, and they've gone in absolutely lovely. So next up, we get these carbon rods epoxied in, and we can look to start shaping this neck. However, that's going to be for the next episode. I think we've done quite enough this time, so I'll be back in a couple of days' time with that. Until then, don't forget to like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.